Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Michelle at the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge. Hello. Hey guys, welcome back. So we have another animal that doesn't want to show their face uh, while we're doing the interview. And what species are we talking about today? So we are going to be looking at Riley, who is a striped skunk um, as one of our animal ambassadors today. How long has Riley been here at the refuge? So Riley came to us in 2015, so um, a few years before I started working here. She was confiscated by FWC, so the Florida Fish and Wildlife, since uh, she was being kept illegally as a pet. They also had her spayed and descented. So unfortunately, um, between being under um, human care in captivity and then having no uh, ability to reproduce or have her defense mechanisms, all of those things deemed her non-releasable, so she was able to be brought um, to an education facility like ours where she can live out the rest of her life and get treated like a queen. It seems like everything that would prevent the skunk from going back out to the wild happened. It can't defend itself with the scent gland, it can't reproduce or make any more skunks, and it grew up around people, so this like, it can't really survive on, on its own. So, kind of unfortunate for Riley, but also kind of fortunate in a way that it gets to come here and you guys get definitely take great care of the skunk, I can tell. Yes, yeah, she definitely gets spoiled. Uh, she gets her special diet. She gets all the love in the world and all the enrichment in the world that she wants to play with. So she's living uh, out the best life, but of course we would have preferred if she could have returned to the wild. Mm. That's always ideal. That's of why you, uh, like places like, like rehabilitation centers like this exist in order to get animals back out to the wild. And is this an ambassador animal here? Yes, Riley. Um, she's been with us taking part of our education programs uh, since she arrived in 2015. Um, we don't really know exactly how old she is, but she was definitely an adult when she got here, so we're presuming at least one or two. Um, so she is uh, getting an old age for a skunk, but of course skunks in captivity can live a little bit longer, so she probably has a few more years left, but she has a little bit of arthritis, a couple health issues, uh, so we're just working around that and again, cushioning her the best that we can. Where can you find these striped skunks out in the wild? Um, they're pretty common, you know, here in Northwest Florida. So typically um, very like wooded areas where they can seek cover. Um, they are omnivores, so they'll eat a little bit of plant material, maybe some small lizards and things. Uh, when Riley's having a really good day, uh, she will definitely hunt down a little lizard that manages to, to get in here and not get back out. What kind of animals would try to eat a striped skunk? So skunks can be prey items just for your typical uh, carnivorous predatory species so your coyotes your foxes things like that that would just kind of hunt them down and uh, you know want to eat them for their meat i know this is true for a lot of uh, small mammal species that they are on the rabies vector list is the skunk one of those species yes both striped skunks and spotted skunks are on our rabies vector species list and what other animals that uh, you guys have here at the facility at the facility that are also on that list uh, so we have our um, raccoon ambassador, her name is Rose, she's also a rabies vector species. And then we also have a red fox named Loxy, and she's also a rabies vector species as well. Are there any other small mammals that uh, aren't on that list? Um, so it's just possums, right? Uh, yes, possums are not considered rabies vector species due to their uh, body temperature being too low. Um, sometimes squirrels uh, kind of could absolutely carry rabies, but I don't think there's been a positive reported case as far as I know, so the chances for those would be pretty slim. And you mentioned the spotted skunk, which is one that I have not uh, seen before. Um, are these skunks also native to Florida? Yes, uh, spot the eastern spotted skunk is native to Florida. They are not very easily found. They're actually so rare that if you do happen to spot one uh, out in the wild, or if they're brought to my facility here, um, I'm obligated to make sure I can report it to um, lots of different links or websites, but most importantly, Florida Fish and Wildlife, so they can track where those populations are, know where they came from, so that they know um, where, where they're residing. And so if we need to do any conservation efforts, we'll know where to start. And the number one thing that people always think about with skunks is that they smell. <laughs> so how is that like smell used uh, to help them out in the wild? Well, so their scent glands, uh, which are located uh, in their rear, is definitely used as a defense mechanism uh, to their predators. So the, if they get stressed or startled, uh, they'll kind of just automatically shoot it out um, and then they can run away uh, while they're kind of disoriented. It usually smells uh, just really bad odor, um, you know, can kind of smell like a dead animal, so that might also deter the predator away uh, from thinking it's a healthy live animal that they can eat. So we mentioned that the skunk is part of your education programs. What other animals on the facility do you guys have to help teach people about wild animals? 
So all of the animal ambassadors that we have um, include two leopard geckos called Simon and Garfunkel. We have two corn snakes that are named Butch and Dwight. We have an African spurred tortoise, uh, also known as a sulcata tortoise. His name is Sheldon. We have a gopher tortoise named Landlord. We have a red-shouldered hawk named Aries, a barred owl named Snarky, our um, striped skunk named Riley, a raccoon named Rose, and a red fox named Loxie. And that, um, I think, adds up to about 13 or 14 of our strains. And how many skunks have you guys rehabilitated this, uh, I guess, the last year? This is freshly in the new year. Sure. Um, so for 2021, um, we don't see striped skunks or the eastern spotted skunk um, too often. I don't even recall us seeing any striped skunks in 2021. Uh, but something that was definitely new for us was uh, we don't see the spotted skunks too often, and we ended up getting a litter of five of them in early 2021. So we were able to successfully um, hand raise them and get them released back into the wild. Well, I guess it's a good thing that you guys don't see as many skunks, and hopefully they're out there out in the wild doing what skunks do and not um, getting hit by cars and stuff and having to, like, you, as important as you guys are, the ideal uh, situation here is that you guys don't have to be here and help the animals because uh, right. they're just out there doing their thing. Yeah, exactly. Our, our whole mission here is rescue, rehab, and release. So our purpose is not to turn any of our rehab animals uh, into permanent residents, but if it uh, has to happen that way, then, you know, if we have the space for it, great. Otherwise, uh, you know, we try to get everyone returned back into the wild. And we had, for 2021, 1,710 patients last year. So we typically average anywhere between 1,700 to 1,800 animals a year. That's a lot of animals. Yes. <laughs> you guys are doing some uh, good work out here. And then with these education animals, you have to teach people, like all of my viewers, about these awesome uh, animal species that are found down here in Florida. Yes, yes. We definitely love what we do. Uh, we love rehabbing them, but we also love uh, teaching people just about what animals um, live in their own community and how we can make sure that they continue to thrive um, and coexist with our uh, with our own community. Well, thank you so much for telling us about the skunk in your facility here. Yeah, yeah, anytime. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, we had a lot of fun today. Yeah, I, we live close by, so we can definitely come back at some other point. Excellent, excellent. Hopefully we'll see you around soon. Uh, hopefully. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next time.